Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who are listening to our archive, welcome. I'm going through rather quickly because it's Peggy, Lauren, and I, and Peggy and I are both from Arizona. Lauren is from Canada. You can figure out where that goes on the map. So we want to welcome you to the May Mini Geek Fest. We've got Lorna, who is working hard on her iPad trying to figure out things. We've got Peggy with a cold, nothing worse than a spring slash summer cold, but she'll be part of our group here tonight as she makes her way through without hopefully coughing or hacking away too much. And as she has here in this slide, she'll have all of our links put in a live binder for you to refer back to. So um, nothing but great information ahead for tonight. Now, you've got to admit, no matter what this site does, it's got such a great name, Pick. Monkey. So it's edit your photo or drag it here, and it's got food on there. Now I'm hungry. Thank you, Peggy. Peggy, share your pick monkey with us. Yay! I had forgotten to turn my mic off. I'm glad I didn't cough in those few seconds there. But um, I don't think we've shared this one before. But I had somebody remind me of it in the 4T conference uh, in the last couple of days. Pick Monkey is really taking the place of what used to be Picnic that disappeared. So it's basically Ooh. an online photo editing tool. You can drag your picture right onto it, or you can upload it to it, and then you can edit with it, um, adding captions and doing various things with it. And it appears that collages are coming soon. So I thought this is something that people would love to know about. So that's PicMonkey. Great. OK, now we're on to Mini Eyes. Yes, and as long as I'm on the mic and on a roll here, um, I, this Mini Eyes is another one that I just had somebody share in the 4T conference. And they were doing a lot of talking about different kinds of visualization that you can do. And this site is amazing. And you not only can just use data that they provide for you, and your students can you know, manipulate it in lots of different ways, creating all kinds of graphs and charts, but you can also upload your own data set. So you could actually ask students to complete a Google form for a survey, and then take the data from the spreadsheet and upload it into Many Eyes and create a visualization right here on Many Eyes. So I thought that was a very cool tool. And this next slide just is to show you that they have a tour on their site that will guide you through a lot of the things they already have uploaded in their databases. So you can actually play with their data and see the many things that you can do with it. So I think it's well worth exploring. And since we're on a graphing kind of thing role, here goes Kim. And I'm just chatting away here, and nobody's hearing a word. What I really like about Mini Eyes is it goes right in line with that whole infographics thing, the session that we had at WOW that really had a, a deep impression on many of us. I know that people who were here at my house absolutely loved it, and we ended up sharing it with the mice. And, and the mice are the teachers I work with in Madison. They absolutely loved infographics and shared it. We had about 25 Meisters there. And that one was one of those quiet moments. And if, for those of you who have worked with teachers, when you have more than 10 teachers together and it get, gets quiet, there's something either really scary going on or a lot of learning going on. And they loved, loved infographics. So keeping that in mind, my bestest friend Joe reminded me about Create a Graph. And it's something that bears repeating. What I love about it is it's good information. And it's simple. I love something that you can dive in. You can use it. Your kids can pick it up and use it relatively easily. And as we look at the picture here, you can see that there are five different types of graphs that you can pick from. And I know these pictures are small, but this is just to give you a little bit of an overview. You um, follow through on the tabs on the right-hand side. Once again, easy to use. You enter in your data. and. 
looks like I put the same graph in each time. What a dork. And then you can enter in your data and you can set your labels and I believe I'm going to get here. Then you can even do a 3D graph if you want to. And what I like about this is you can download that graph or you can print it or you can email the graph. Yay! And we're going to become a Google district in that um, it's an opt-in. So all I can envision are second, third graders, maybe even kindergartners, building graphs and emailing it through their, their Google. Wahoo! So I have dreams that I hope we get to live next year. So create a graph. Check it out. Wonderfully simple. Great to use. Lorna, is there one you'd like to share? Are you still staring at your iPad or is there one you'd like to share with us tonight? And I caught Lorna completely off guard. Well, you did because I figured out how to make uh, reflection work. I just don't <laughs> know whether I can app share it. That's why I'm trying to figure that part out, whether okay. I can app share while I'm mirroring the iPad. Okay, well, so, I you lost I, me. I, I was, yes. Well, in order for reflection to work, in order so that I can see what's going on in my iPad on my computer, you have this app called Reflection, right, which you download mm -hmm. and then it uses wirelessly. It connects with something called AirPlay so that I could actually, the reason I got it before was to do a screencast of what goes on on the iPad because there's no way of screen capturing the actions on an iPad other than oh, yeah. drawing or adding letters or, you know, uh -huh. Where they they're sort of like screen captures and recorded actions that you draw, but actually doing a web tour of a website that's going on in an iPad. Or right now we're trying to figure out where this course that I wanted to talk about, mm -hmm. the TEDx course about um, visual arts and mastering it with technology, which was absolutely phenomenal um, videos. That if you give me for a few more minutes, I'm going to go look okay. for the links to the videos and not. So much reflection, but okay. we never know. We we, we, we finished recording. Maybe you'll let me play after. And okay. See what happens. okay. We'd so love to try it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I'll go look for the links first. Okay. okay. Thanks, Lorna. Okay. Now we're going to take it. Let's see how Peggy is doing with her cold educational technology <laughs> and mobile learning. Yay! I actually have two things I'm sharing from this site. It's just an amazing site. But this first one is eight free tools for teachers to make awesome infographics. And I love the fact that many of them are things that you can just go right onto the website and actually um, put your information in and create the infographic. And that was inspired by that awesome presentation we had at the WOW conference um, with Robin Richards where he told us about the value of visual storytelling with infographics. So. We want it to be as easy as possible. So I think if you go to that site, you'll find some great tools there that you can use and give it a try. The next site that also comes from education technology is um, also free tools for teachers. It's 20 free tools for teachers to create awesome presentations and slideshows. And you know, we're always looking for places that we can do that that have some of the neat bells and whistles that, that make it really easy for you. And these twenty free tools are great and I know that many of the people who who join us for um, our Mini Geek Fest are already using a lot of them. The first one I only took a screenshot of the top of the page and a slide share was on that page, but um, they have a lot of others too. So when you get a little time, I'm hoping that with summer coming, that teachers will actually have some time that they can go in and just plain explore. So those are my two from that site. And now it's Kim's turn. Okay, sorry, I get so involved in the, the websites from Peggy that I just lose track of things. Um, this was one from our um, Mini Geek Fest, not Mini Geek Fest, I'm sorry, the WOW Smackdown that just it's another one of those that resonated with the teachers. Amanda Dahl, one of our maestros, had I, when I asked him to come in and share with our at our mice meeting, 
this is the one she picked, and she said, guys, if you only go to one site, you've got to go to this one. Um, and she acknowledged, as am I, she, he does sell things, and that is absolutely fine. But what I like most about this, he's got like experiments of the week, and I hope I I hope I don't get too excited about this. And to sign up for some of the, the experiments that they do, and I jumped ahead, sorry. Um, there's 10 top science experiments, and the money magnet, totally, I have to try this one. I just thought it was absolutely wonderful. You can sign up for the newsletter, a um, whole bunch of experiments and different things to do. Somebody who is out selling things to the world, but also providing a lot of good resources for those of us who love science and want to expand our children's knowledge to a lot of hands-on stuff. And for a lot of people who are may not have a good science um, supply list that he helps you gather things that you can use just for everyday science experiments. So I hope you check it out. I absolutely love this site. So I can hardly wait till my one-year-old grandson hurry up and grows up so we can do science at home here because I don't get to do it in the classroom with the students anymore. So Bryson, hurry up and grow up so we can do this stuff. Okay, we're on to our next one here. This is another one that we got from the WOW conference and I I'm not sure if it was from our SmackDown or where it was from. Socrative, and I'm probably not saying it right, and that is I'm okay with it not being right um, because it doesn't matter because it is such a good website. One of our Meisters who was not at um, the conference here, the virtual conference at my house, was working from home and she fell in love with this site. You can go in and set up responses and the beauty of this is she learned about it on Saturday and on Monday she used it with her fifth and then sixth grade students at a middle school where she is a technology teacher. All you're going to do is sign up, you get a room number and then they give you a template. Now the, the, the questions you can do are rather simplistic. Um, I think it's multiple choice, open-ended and true false. They give you the template, you fill it in you give your students the link, they put in the room number, and the most amazing part was Tuesday afternoon she said, you must come in and watch this. So they were doing a reflection on the five top to the five tools that they had used for the last nine weeks, and they were to give their reflections on that. So I walked in and she said, okay, here you go, boys and girls, here's the link. She gave them a shortened URL. They went in, they put the room number in, and they did their responses. But as it is, as they are doing that, she's got it up on the smart board, and it's got the students' names, because they have to enter their name in because they want to get credit. And then it tells how far they've gone. They've done five out of ten, two out of three, or whatever. And for those kids who are not quite paying attention, um, she can go, Oh, excuse me, I'm about ready to sneeze. She would say, "All right, Jeffrey, you need to hurry up and go along here and get and go." And it's in real time. You don't have to refresh anything, so you can see how things are going. And then, yes, it does. It, re it doesn't give the responses. It just says, "Of the ten open-ended questions you've given, Jeffrey has done eight out out of out of ten. And then, when all is said and done, it gives you a report in an Excel format, which of course you can manipulate. Just so quick and. If Glennis likes it, I know it's going to have an application, so we're probably going to be pushing this one a little bit in the Madison School District because I think it has a quick response that teachers can see and it's purposeful. So um, I'm not sure who brought that one in, but we in Madison absolutely love it. So it gets two thumbs up for Madison and that and 25 cents won't get you much, but I hope you check it out because it's a pretty cool site. Okay, and I, as I'm yammering away here, of course, do I bother to go through and show you? This is what it's going to look like, um, how you can set it up. And I went too far, but that'll give you an idea of what you're going to be seeing. So try it out, guys. Glenda said it took her maybe at tops from starting to actual having one ready about a half an hour. So I get so excited. Okay. Let's go on now to making curriculum pop. Is this a great web page or what? Okay, Peggy. I just learned about this one and I'm just beginning to explore it. But I've been in some sessions where people have been talking about uh, 
ways that they can enhance online curriculum as well as face-to-face. -face. And they told us about this name site. Anyone can join it. It's free. And you can see just from the little bit that I captured in the screenshot that they have a lot of subgroups. And look how many members there are in them. I mean, it's not just a handful. There are um, 300 members in media education literacy, um, making Shakespeare pop. 244 members, and they're sharing resources and all kinds of lessons and videos and things like that that they're using in their curriculum. So it's a great place to jump in and uh, pick the group that's most interesting to you and uh, start collaborating. OK, I will. <laughs> and while I'm here, I love, love, love this Symbaloo. It was, um, we've been learning some different things about different kinds of poetry. And in one of the sessions I was in, someone shared this Symbaloo. And it's so cool because it compiles all different kinds of poetry just on one of those little Symbaloo buttons. So if you either need to refresh your memory on what a particular one might be. So exactly, well, how do you write a haiku, for example? And, it, and then it has lots of examples, plus some creation sites, like the Acrostic Poem Creator, or the Shape Poem Creator, where you can go right in and try the site out and create your poems right there. So I thought that this was a real gold mine that teachers would find really helpful and could also share with their kids, too. Symbaloo is a little bit different than um, Lightbinder because it's not exactly linear like Lightbinder is with the tabs and the sub-tabs. It's a little more visual. Uh, actually, because you can see all those little icons right there. Although, as you notice, all of those that are videos just show a little play button with the title. So that's about a, a perfect match for what you get in Live Binders. But with Live Binders, it stays right in the, on the same site. So if you click on a tab and you go to one of those links, it comes up right in that same window. So uh, both are awesome tools, and I could see using them for different purposes. And you can actually load Symbaloo pages within a live binder. So you might be able to double up when you've got your, your topics going there. Lorna, are you, are you ready to share, or do we need to give you a few more minutes? No, I think I can do this. this is Yay! Just a second, open up this program where oh it's gonna sleep. Come on. I was set a minute ago. <laughs> Isn't that always the case? Look away from the screen, Lorna, and it'll work. Well I've dropped the connection. No, it's still going. Keep on okay. sharing. Okay, we'll come back to you, Lorna. Okay, I'm excited about this one because our district is, uh, is kind of going Google, and so I'm excited to have Peggy share this one with us, and I hope I didn't catch you off guard, Peggy. You didn't at all. Um, this is a very exciting new kind of thing, um, and I didn't get to participate in this conference when it was live. Uh, it was on May 2nd, and we were gearing up for a while at that time. But the cool thing is, everything was recorded. So they were using all kinds of Google tools to do this. And every one of these items that you see on this site, Education on Air, actually has the description and the recording posted now. So you can go in and look up any topic that you're interested in. And I found plenty there that I was interested in. So it's neat that uh, you can get that kind of a feature just on all the many Google tools. There are getting to be so many of them. And this was also shared um, through that time. And it's a site that is has some great 
really short tutorials for Google Docs and spreadsheets. And um, Aaron Slutsky's channel, that's what we're looking at here, has, has a bunch of them. But look, they take like between 30 seconds to two minutes. And um, you can see how popular they are. I mean, look at, uh, you forgot your flash drive, 78,489 views. So anytime you can get a short, quick explanation about something that just jump starts you, that's for me. And it's free too. So be sure to check that out. Okay, I will. Thank you, Peggy. I <laughs> And I'm just on roll here. Um, I think I may have shared TeacherCast before, but this is the most amazing app. I just love it. It's called TeacherCast Pro, and they actually have a website that's TeacherCast.net. But this app I have on my iPhone, and it's also available on the iPad. And what I love about it is you can access so many things through this app. If you look at this picture here, they have a, a link for live binders. And if you click on that link when you're in the app, you can select a category in live binders that you want to view. So if I chose screencasting, for example, they would all pop up right there on my iPhone, and I can actually click on that and play the video within the live binder. Now, I just think that's the slickest thing ever. <laughs> so, um, and they have lots of other things, videos and various classroom tools and things that are on that site. So I would say start with TeacherCast, the website, browse around and see what kinds of resources they have. And then if you happen to have an iPhone or an iPod Touch or an iPad, definitely download the um, app and check it out directly from the app. You're going to be so excited. I know you are. OK. Um, I need to take a break here just so I can go ahead and look at the stuff Peggy talks about. OK. Um, Animaps is something I came across. I don't even remember who sent this link to me. What I like about it is because I'm, I'm very visual, I love maps, and notice how I sneak this in. Because I'm going to Ireland this summer, I'm subtle as a Mac truck, aren't I? I thought this would be a great tool to go ahead and utilize. And what it does is it allows you to do an animation of a trip. So, And I'm not going to take you into it because I haven't figured it out yet, guys. I started playing with it and then just got a little overly involved. I go in. You, Go into Google Maps, and you know where you can put your markers, and then you get the pop-up where you can put a, a picture in. Well, you can go ahead and you, through animation, you do your trip on the map, and then you can stop and put those little post-its, or I call it post-its, and then it plays it in animation form. So wanting to prepare for Ireland, and I mean, it's a small country, Kim, how hard is this? But I want to go ahead and have this prepared so our first day in Dublin, and then we go here, and then we go there, and have some of the markers in there so we get a good visual of where we're going. Because I'm just so excited. And I think this is a really good way to capture students' interest. So let's imagine they were doing, um, I'm trying to think of the, the March the one that they did in um, Japan, I think it was the Death March. I can't remember what it was. So they could actually plot that along and then put things in that would just be, I think, really interesting and have a chance to bring things alive for the kids. So check it out. I haven't got it mastered yet. I've watched the tutorials, so get kind of distracted here. So I hope you check it out. I'm hoping to get some middle school kids that will learn it next year that will help me teach it to some others. So check it out. OK. And Lorna says she's ready. And so we're going to hold off on the Google Research tool for just a second, if we could, and get Lorna in here. I'm on here. Not sure how well this is going to work, because it may be taking over. Um... OK, mirroring's on. Hang on, go to reflection. OK, I have it showing, but I can only think I can only show you the reflection when I go to App Share, but we'll give this a shot. So I'm going to go into Application Sharing. And it won't let me go into application sharing because I'm not a moderator. 
I need to be a moderator to do application sharing. So Peggy's going to make me a moderator. Great. Thank you. Now app share. Reflection iPad. Look at that. Okay. So this so is your iPad, Peggy? Okay. Oh, this is this is Lorna's iPad. Okay. So where are we going? I tunes you. It's working beautifully, isn't it? Yes. Somebody said yes. Okay. So this is one of the I watched all of them, almost all of them. But you can just see what happens now. Lorna, can I ask okay, when you, you download the iPad? I'll be quiet. My question is, could you hear that when I start playing it? Nope. Because no, of web sharing, can't. don't we have to start it ourselves, Peggy? Oh, no, she's well, saying you, we won't be able to hear audio in the app sharing. Hmm. But I can play it and then listen to it. Well, you hear it through my headset if I did this, I think. Yeah. Lorna, when you download the I, uh, the TED Talk videos, where do you download them to? Onto the iPad. Okay, but where are they? Are they in iTunes University? Where are they? Where do they reside? Yes, it, this this particular one was, of course, in iTunes U. Okay, so let me go back to here to the library. This is my iTunes U to the courses I've okay. downloaded. And here's another really interesting one besides the visual arts. And I threw in a link there to Marco Tempest. I think he's, he's got three iPods iPods and he's using deception and moving them back and forth. That's why I just wanted to show you that video so you can just see it without listening to it because I think it's already on the iPad. There we go. Let's see how far I can get him into it. What he's about to do is to take three iPods and I can't make it load any faster. What he's doing is visualizing something through multiple screens, so that three different iPods, and he's going to set himself up and you watch what he does with the iPods. My question, is this really coming through quite clearly for you? It is. It's, remember when they used to load um, line by line? Yes. That's what it's doing. Oh, okay. Oh, look at this. You get the three different ones. I saw something like that in a Swedish TED Talk where they had multiple iPads, I believe it was, that they would made it look like they were all part of one set. Right. It is. It's just amazing. So, um, anyway, I just thought this was a really, really huh. interesting course. And it's going to be interesting when I see the recording to see what this actually does look like because I think this is pretty neat to be able to demo what's on your iPad in app sharing because I don't think we've tried doing this yet. Right? Uh, I, I predict we'll see this in a Classroom Live 2.0 web show. Yeah, I think so. Okay. This is my other thing that I'm really having fun with lately is draw something. Is you, that the you game? this game? Yes. It's, it's uh, my just, daughter, yeah. It's a lot of fun. So. For those of us who are um, art challenged, it's not that much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a stick map. It's People a work stick really map. well, right? Yeah. So that's my man. sharing, and I'm going to stop app sharing now. But I'm just totally amazed at how clear, crystal clear that is. It is. For that rendering. is amazing. Thank you, Lorna. Oh, cool beans. Okay. Thanks. So to stop sharing, we'll be okay. There we go. <laughs> It has taken complete control. Okay. Okay, back. I know Peggy wants an iPad. Okay, we want one for you, Peggy. Um, last week I got an email from a teacher I work with talking about the new research tool. So I'm in my Madison Google account and I cannot make it work and it's driving me crazy because Madison has their own domain. Well, then I went, oh, wait a minute. So I went into my personal Gmail account and it works. So any districts that have their own domain, until the update has been done, you may not have it. What makes Google Research cool? I can have an I or I 
I can't, I'm thinking iPad, I can have my Google Doc up and instead of having to open up another one to do my research, all I'm going to do is go to the tools and go down to the research button and when you can see in the screenshot here to the right, it opens up another sidebar there and so I do my web search right in there. And if you'll notice, I've got where I did a search on, I believe it was Celts, and then it's got Wikipedia, but if you look below that, it says preview, insert, and I think that's a site. So now I can go ahead and preview the website right within. Once again, where I still have my Google Doc open, I can preview that site and I can insert the link or, and I can cite it as well. You can do that with images. It is just slick. So of course I ran to our IT person and said, do an upgrade. We have to have this because I just think this is incredible for teachers and students, but all I can think of is when we've got middle school students where we're working really, really, really hard on giving credit where credit is due, to quote Ruth Catalano, but to make that citing in there, who am I kidding, I really want the teachers to do it, but of course then they in turn will teach their students. So it's the never ending expansion of Google that they're constantly bringing in tools to is what the work we're doing, but to help us be more efficient with the time. So um, I love it. And as Peggy says, same functions as Yo Yo Link. I haven't used it a lot, so yay! I think it rocks. So um, let's go on here. I'm excited about iJolt just for the fact that you gotta love the name, if nothing else. I think it's got <laughs> a great name. I agree. And I think it's so funny because we find all these wonderful sites and everybody pronounces them differently. So I, just, I have okay. no idea how you should pronounce this, but I was pronouncing it I jot, thinking maybe it's just something you do fast because they say it's video mail in a blink. So, uh, and that's what's cool about it. Right from your iPhone, you can uh, take your video and and send it through iJot. So it's a a fast, easy way to share videos with people. Where do where did I get Joel? I have no idea. <laughs> but check it out, iJot. Um, the next thing I wanted to share, I had the privilege of being in a webinar with Kevin Honeycutt just this last week. And I know any of you that have done that and have seen him present know how touching and inspiring he can be. And this webinar was sponsored by edweb.net. And um, they have some really excellent webinars going on. This one probably had a couple hundred people in it, but it was the perfect webinar for the end of the school year. And he talks about, you know, how tired the teachers are and so many responsibilities and so much going on. And he tells his stories, and it's called Inspiring Teachers Changing Lives. You will love it. The recording is on that link. And um, he actually started with pre-show music, played his guitar, and sang a little bit. And his assistant uh, person there from ESDAC joined him. Her name is Ginger. And they did both be pre-show and post-show music, where they sang, played their iPad instruments, and all kinds of things. And then right in the middle of it is Kevin sharing his stories and just helping everyone to feel like, I know why I'm a teacher. I'm making a difference. So the recording itself is about an hour, but the pre-show, and the neat thing about this site is you can actually click to whatever slide you want to go to. So you can uh, skip the pre-show music, go straight to the presentation, then uh, go through the end, and then skip the post-show if you want to. People didn't want to leave, I think, a half an hour after the session. So that's after we had been there an hour and a half. There were still 60 people in the room staying for the music. So yeah, you know, the, the 
I think the whole thing is great, Kim, and it would be a good catnip class, um, both for the inspiration, but also seeing the tools he uses and how he connects to students and how that whole message that he likes to share about it's all about relationships and the teachers connecting with their students. So you'll have to watch it and, and decide if it's a if it's a good match for your PD, but I think it would be awesome. And while I'm still here, I threw in several of these together. Um, and, and Kim, you jump in whenever you're ready with something else. But I wanted to tell people that we had a great show this last Saturday on uh, how to go about building your personal learning network. And the two presenters were uh, Tim Wilhelmus and Brett Clark. And they shared an entire live binder that is just loaded with resources. And they talked us through them. So a lot of, time, of the time, they talked about Twitter as their example and some of the tools that you can use with Twitter, like TweetDeck and like um, Hootsuite. There were a bunch of them. And then they, they taught about how to use um, Twitter chats and hashtags and just some really excellent information. So if you get a chance, that's a webinar well worth listening to and checking out the Live Binder for. Should I keep going, Kim? Are you ready to jump in with something? No, Peggy, because I'm taking notes here and reading. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I was in, and you can keep dropping my links in for me. That's wonderful. Um, this experiential mobile uh, site on Flickr is actually Jackie Gerstein's site. And uh, I was in a webinar with her where she did a lot of interactive things with us. And um, she introduced us to I Am Poems. And um, I, that first link there, the Read, Write, Think link, is actually a PDF with some examples and also the guides, guidelines for writing an I Am Poem. Well, she didn't really teach us how to write one, but what she had us do was share a picture. It could be a picture of ourselves or anything, really. But share a picture, send it into Flickr via this um, account, and you could do it online or you could do it with your mobile phone, and then write your I Am poem there. And then she posted them right in this Flickr account so we could all see what each other um, was writing. And you'll see that our, our I Am poems are very basic and just trying it out. But just the idea that in like five minutes time, really, we uploaded a picture. Some people actually took their picture right there on their phone, sh uh, shared it by, via email, and then added our poem to it. So I think it's cool that you can do interactive things like that in an online webinar, which is where she was. And the next thing I'm sharing is I know lots of people have the chance to participate in the WOW Virtual Technology Conference, but all of the recordings and the live binders are posted now. So if you didn't join the Moodle, you still can. You just go in and go to ast.org slash Moodle, join and then you can access all of the recordings. The live binders are amazing. I mean, we've had, uh, all of them have had over 450 views on them. And I, I think the one, you're going to love this, Kim, the one that's been viewed the most is the one for um, the SmackDown. And it's like way up there, like 1,600 times or something like that. So people are getting a lot out of them and finding tons of great resources. So uh, I wanted to share that again. And this, I think, <laughs> you did not. This link I loved. Someone shared this in a workshop this, or a webinar this week. And it was uh, the search for writing live binders. It was in that poetry um, session. And 
this particular link takes you to all of the live binders that have been created that use the tag writing. And I was so impressed. I mean, there's so many good ones, but there are a thousand of them. This first page was showing one to 12 binders out of a thousand. And you can see when you look just at that screenshot that some of them have been viewed 8,000 times, 6,000 times, 9,000 times. So that is like my favorite place to search, really. I'd rather start with live binders and do my search than start with Google because I know that those binders have been created by teachers and they're using them with students. And it's just great to get live binders that um, have been vetted in that way. Yeah, Kath Catherine Douthard is right at the top of that screenshot. And she's actually one of the live binder people that I shared during our SmackDown because she has done some amazing binders. And you can see that her binders are getting viewed a lot. So be sure and take a look at those. If you're teaching writing, and even with, with the Common Core Standards developing the way they are, all focused on literacy, everyone's going to be a writing teacher, so all kinds of teachers will want to take a look at these um, resources and see how they can invigorate writing and integrate it into what they're doing. Ready to jump in yet, Kim? This is my last one. No, I'm sorry. I was just, OK. Audio book we've done before is it, yes. it's new and improved, isn't it? It's changed it up. Is. And I am so frustrated because I can't access my account because it says that someone else has that account. And and that so I said forgot my password and asked them to send it to me. Obviously it went to the other person who has <laughs> who has my account. So oh. I, I'm gonna have to have to start a new account. But um I have this app on my iPhone now, and, and so that's why it came back to mind. And I, when we first shared it, I'm not even sure it was an app at that time. Maybe it was, but um, it's such an easy thing to use and to capture your audio right on the fly, audio, video, whatever, and um, send it through to people. So um, that's my sharing about AudioBoo, and I hope that I'll have a real-life example next time. Okay, let me ask before we go there. Lorna, do you know AudioBoo? I wonder if that's an iPad app because I'd love to do that while I'm traveling and be able to send those out to people. I think it is. Oh, I don't yay. know. I don't know, but Peggy knows more than I do. I know. Well, don't you love it? The three of us, only one that doesn't have an iPad knows more. I love this. Okay. Well, I am I'm just so hungry. <laughs> I just keep looking. And I um, I, I usually just get right on my iPhone and search. And when I find that app, I look to see who, um, what it's available as. And, and it usually will say that it's available for iPad. And, and it actually says available for iPhone, Android, and Nokia phones. So oh. it may not be on iPad yet. Okay. I'll have to put it on my phone. It is an app. Oh. I don't know that it is it's probably oh. just a matter of time. Yeah, because everything becomes an app, as we know. It does. It really does. Peggy, how you feeling? Okay, you holding up? I am. My voice is um, almost gone, but but I got through uh, my blitz of things. So, uh, Lorna, anything else you'd like to share? It's hot here in Saint Catherine. <laughs> Okay, Lorna, define hot. <laughs> yes. We have no sympathy oh. in Arizona, you understand. Yeah. No, well it was it was for us it was thirty degrees Celsius. Now let's go find that converter to see what that is. Mm. Mm. Well not yes, I mean? Oh well that is no. warm for you, Lorna. I don't think it's eighty five. No. Oh, okay, that's my that's, that's Christmas Day. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. We were out yesterday, and my husband and I needed to take an orange tree down. Well, of course we do it when we come back from the movies right at noon. 
And by the time we took it down, oh I was red face because it was what 108 I yesterday. Bet. Yeah, it was. My my thermometer said 110 yesterday. I on see it was the patio in the yes. shade. Yes, and let me tell you, taking that thing down, and I have to start walking schools to do inventory for audio enhancements, and. It's kind of like, I guess, winter in maybe Calgary. You go outside, get really cold, go inside and get warm. Yes. It's the, just the opposite here. By the time I go from wow. room to room, you know, for eight schools, it's I, I will probably have a Peggy cold by the time all is said and I done. I bet you will. Yeah. Go and, Lorna, that. I will grant you that your humid heat yeah. is more uncomfortable than our dry heat. So that it is, it is very mm -hmm. hot. And that for this time of year in particular, that's pretty warm, isn't mm -hmm. it? It is. Unusual. Yeah. Well, and now, wait a minute. Lorna, do you guys have air conditioning? Yes, but I don't oh, have it on. <laughs> <laughs> I went and took the cover off <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> we have to cover it up for the winter. Yeah, okay. we think so. I think yeah. it's time. <laughs> it's time. It's time. It's well, time. Um, I, I think we've got a lot covered. I know I have to go and get a um, drink here and then sit down and start to play. All right. I've okay. got plan to do, too. There you go. So Lorna, you can take well, us out, Kim. Okay, Lorna, thank you so much for joining us. I love the fact that you shared and you did it all the first with us. Okay, <laughs> special thanks to ASD and Blackboard Collaborate and, of course, our um, SIT project that we have with the state of Arizona. Um, if you'd like a professional development certificate, Lorna, I'm sure you're going to need that. So you can go ahead and click on the link provided on this page and we'll get one to you. We don't know about next month yet. June is a really busy month and I'm probably going to get an amen from Lorna and from Peggy on this one. Between professional development, is T, as T things, traveling, we're not sure what June is going to look like, guys. So we hope that people who are listening will stay tuned and um, follow Peggy on Twitter because heaven knows I don't. I'm just not a Twitterer. Check with us to see when we're going to be coming back, and we hope you will join us. Hopefully, you'll consider joining ASTE. We provide a lot of opportunities for educators and anybody interested in educational technology out there. And reminder, there is uh, Google with ASTE coming up June 18th and 19th here in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, it's ASTE, and I believe Dr. Alice Christie is involved, too. I'd be going, too, if I weren't traveling. It's a wonderful opportunity. And last but not least, where can you go from here? Go ahead and consider joining us with ASTE. Technology Integration Support and Follow-up from the SIT Project, and I can't say enough about those state technology or integration technology gals. Sherry Stafford is working with our district in two weeks, and we appreciate um, all their help. And I think we have reached the end of the line. Um, much thanks to Lorna for joining us, and always with a deep felt uh, appreciation and gratitude to Peggy George. I refer to her as the mentor of the world. She helps many of us grow, learn, and expand what we do. So Peggy, thank you, and we hope you feel better. To everybody out there in technology land, talk to you soon. <laughs>